just me and my guitar Hey, welcome back guys. Mark back in the workshop again on Mark's Aquatics. It's a beautiful morning in the tank as you can see. Today we're going to be setting up this CO2 system inside the aquarium so we can make all these nice little plants and little trees we've got going on flourish away and we're going to get some really good growth off them and make the most of what we've got inside the tank heating wise and filtration wise and everything. Give them the best start we can and really get these plants growing on well. So I'm just going to go now and I'm going to turn the shed lights on. There you go. We're all back. Right, what we've got here is a CO2 system from another tank that I've had a while back. Now, on the last video you saw me, um, you saw this arrive, the old um, fire extinguisher which has got CO2 in it, exactly the same as any other CO2 in the world that you get put into a container. It's all the same stuff. It's just this is for putting fires out. And it's a really cheap and effective way of, um, of running CO2 on your tank. Now if you've got a little tiny tank and you want to run a massive bottle like this, it's going to last you for months because you're going to be doing a couple of bubbles a second or maybe a bubble a second if that to run a small system this tank might be even two two bubbles maybe two to three bubbles a, a second i'm not sure yet we've got to work it all out but what came today is um is our box of bits now i lost all my other stuff i don't know where it went my diffuser got broken i had it up on one of my shelves somewhere and um and that got smashed so or cracked so we can't use that so i've ordered up some new stuff and um I'll just shift this aside and we can open up this little box of tricks and see what the guy sent me. Oh, I've got a new little craft knife, look at that. Now they say fragile, they put fragile over it, but it looks like it's been kicked around like a football, so let's hope everything's okay. Right, first of all we've got a load of suckers, got some suckers in there for the pipes, some anti non-return valves there, so our CO2 can go through one way and obviously if, because it's in the tank we don't have water going back through and self-siphoning back down into this, into, this, into this system once we've got it set up. And he's put a little valve in there as well which is uh, obviously for a bubble counter if you can adjust your CO2 with that but I'm not going to use that because I've got a decent bubble counter already built onto this system. I ordered a few little bits and I'll stick a link in the description actually where I got this from, from this guy off of eBay. It seems to do uh, good stuff. Right, first of all there's the, the diffuser. Got a nice little ceramic top in there and this one's got its own little bubble counter inside it. You see the bubbles going round and then bubbling up. You can count your how many bubbles go up into the diffuser and pressurize that before it purges through and you get your, your release of uh, CO2. Right, we got two types of, oh no, that's the one I had before. That's my old one. We got some drop checker, some liquid there, which goes into, into this little gadget here. And if you're unfamiliar with these, this is to test how much CO2 is in your system, okay? because CO2 can kill your fish, don't forget. So it's quite, uh, it's imperative that you get the right levels going in. Okay, so what you do is you put X amount of drops in there. I think it's about 15 drops of used this stuff before. Into there like that. Then you tip it up and it goes into that ball there and stays in there, okay? And then the CO2 in the water travels up through there and it turns this liquid from blue to yellow to green. Now you want it to be green, not yellow. Yellow's too much, green's just the right amount. So we'll get into that in a minute when we get setting this thing up. And I've got a nice little U-bend there as well, which is gonna fit over the top of the tank. So our pipe work's gonna come up there, exit there, back into the tank with our diffuser at the bottom. And we'll get into that in a minute. 
Right, let me clear all this rubbish away. Now I've got an, an old JBL regulator here. I'll stick the top back on my little knife before I stab my fingers. Don't want to be doing that. Right, basically what we've got there is we've got how many bar is in the system, is in the bottles, and I think it runs around sure it's about two bar in these in these bottles I'm not sure we'll check when we put it on but then you've got the bar reading on both sides you've got two different settings there you've got the adjuster valve there that's to let in as much or as less as you want CO2 going in so what we've got to do we've got to get our old fire extinguisher now Make sure your valves are always nicely seated in there and they're not cracked or anything or you'll be losing CO2 and we don't want to be losing any CO2 and that just pushes then directly with a nice push you that seats in there nice and tight and then you can screw that on there and I'll use a pair of grips in a moment and we'll just nip that up so now that's fixed directly now straight to that fire extinguisher you see which is what we need. Now the next little gadget you can see, I'll just move these pipes out of the way a minute. Right, so that's all you've got to do guys with any CO2 unit. First the first thing first, don't push don't open it yet. Leave the peg in the fire extinguisher and all the little tags on. You don't need to uh, take any of that off just yet. But then from that pressurization unit there, from this little valve which regulates the CO2 going out, you go into this thing here. Okay, that's called a solenoid. And basically what that does is that goes onto a timer. This has got a European plug on this one. But basically it goes into a timer like that, plugs into the wall, and then with CO2, your plants only take in CO2 at night time. They don't use CO2 during the during the evening time. They shut down. That photosynthetic time of the day is over. And when they've got the light, they use CO2. In the evening, they don't use the CO2, okay? And then they release the oxygen again during the daytime. As you can see, those little purling the little pearls they call them on the plant, you can see them, little oxygen bubbles getting released, which is referred to as purling. Um, that's what happens. So they're using the CO2 in the day, they're making like crude carbohydrates in the sugars out of the sunlight through photosynthesis. Oh my God, that's what I'd want to say, isn't it? And, um, and they say they're, they're releasing the oxygen then during the day, but at night time, they don't release, they use oxygen in the night time, but they don't, they don't release any in the night time. They store it at the night time because there's no sunlight to keep that respiration, respiratory system going as it were. And then when your lights come back on again, then they start to utilize that carbon dioxide again and release that oxygen again, creating more food and thus growing away. So um, that's sort of a basic thing how it works. There's a lot more complex chemistry that goes into it, obviously with pH swings and different things and affects your KH. Um, but we'll get into that on another video. I think this is going to be quite a long one. We're going to be setting all this stuff up. So, um, well, I say recommended dosage is for, uh, for CO2 in a, in, a, in a tank where you're keeping fish and shrimps is around 30 parts per million, okay? Now, with these little bubble checkers, drip checkers, when they go green, that is about roughly around 30 parts per million when it goes green, okay? If it goes yellow, that means it's over 30 parts per million and you're going to want to reduce it by the bubbles going in. You just turn the bubble drips and you know one every couple of seconds to, to one a second or something like that. You just gotta to get it right and um, and do it very very slowly because obviously if you've got fish that can kill your fish and your shrimp so it is toxic if overdosed on. But if you do overdose it in any way shape or form the best way to get rid of it out of there to get that dissolved gas out of the water is by doing a big water change and that will get rid of that gas and drop those levels down again and put you in a safer range again, okay, where your fish are gonna be okay. 
Right then, with this guy here, we've got our solenoid valve there. Now, now with why we've got the solenoid on there is because, like I just said, you want your solenoid, your timer, to be set an hour before your lights come on. Okay, so if your lights come on at seven in the morning, stick this on to come on, on at six in the morning, okay? So it's coming on an hour before. And do the reverse in the evening. So before your lights go off, turn it off an hour before. So if your lights go off at eight, turn your CO2 off at seven, okay? That's how you work this on the timer. So you're not using, because they don't use CO2, class don't, don't use the CO2 of a night time, okay? Because there's no sunlight, there's no light for this, um, for this to happen. So they don't use it. So that's why we fit one of these on and you're not wasting CO2 at night where it's not being used. So that's how that works. <clears throat> now on this inline system here, which I've got, I've got an old, an old bubble checker on there. Which basically the gas comes from the cylinder through this, through the solenoid, comes down this pipe inside, which is filled up to that line there with water and the bubbles will pop up there. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, as many bubbles or as little as you want coming out. So you can have one, you can have one bubble a second, or you can have six bubbles a second. It, it depends entirely on your system, how big your system is, and um, and what you're stocking in it and everything else. So there's a few varies there. A few variables there which you've got to take into consideration. But there's lots of other videos on YouTube that teach you about CO2. And um, go and check some of those out as well. There's some more in-depth ones on there. This is basically just to set you up, show you how to set one of these things up. And like I say, if you want me to do more on the chemistry side, drop me a message in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll gladly do it. But um, yeah, so this is how this is set up. Now this stays outside the tank. And then obviously this end then comes from the pot from there. That end goes then into your aquarium. Okay, which goes inside, and then your diffuser, and then that fits onto there like that. Now, what I like to do is put that in some hot water, really get that nice and soft, push that in. There's a small ridge there, you see, over the top. Now, when that goes in over the top, nice and nice and warm, you can put it in some boiling water for a few seconds, push it on there nicely, and then put it under let it cool down sorry slowly and it'll contract around there and you'll have an amazing seal on there you won't pull it off and you'll need to put some warm water back on it again to soften the pipe up again to pull it off or you'll probably end up snapping this and uh, that's not a good thing and the same goes for the u-bend which goes over the top of the tank it's going to go over the top of the wood i'll set you up differently in a minute and um, and i'll show you then how we put all this together We'll have to drop some water out of this big system as well because it's your water change today for when we set it up because of all that new media. We're going to take some of the old water out and we're going to replace that with some fresh water. So once I've got that water level down, we can get the top off and then we'll rig up this system and we'll get it running. We'll put the drop checker in and, um, and we'll get it fired up and we'll get it working, okay? Right guys, we're all set up again on the tripod. I've got the top out of the tank. As you can see, I've dropped a fair old bit of water out there now. I've got my hot water down there. And I've got my other bits that I've got to be putting on. Now I've just put on a few, just to let you know what I've done so far. I've put the fire extinguisher down now on the floor and I've thread this pipe now through the back. I'll take you all through it there put an anti-return valve on on here now this is the end now that's going to be going to the tank so what I've got to do is you've got to put that bend on there now so like I said before guys I'll just uh, roll up my old baggy sleeves there it's a bit chilly out here today just dip that water dip that in the water there for a in that boiling water let it soften that tube up and then You'll see that will push right up there then. Right up to there very easily. Now once that goes cold, that will grab hold of that and that will be seriously tight on there. Now you won't get that off unless you apply some more hot water to it. Otherwise you'll break the uh, 
you'll break this part. Now, I'm going to get the other half of this tube and do the same thing. And uh, we put this on so we don't get any kinks in the top. And then we've got them nicely, oops sorry, we've got that nicely on there now, so that's going to loop nicely now over the top of the over the top of the tank and into now all I'm gonna do on this side gonna have to change your your angle of uh, your angle of watching here a minute so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pretend that this is the back of the tank here hook that over the top and I'm gonna want about that much so we can snip that off there Before I do that, I'll slide these two these suction cups right up there. I've got three of them. I've got different types here. He's, he's sent me some with the holes that go right through, and some with split hoops, which you just push the airline in. Now, I prefer the solid ones, to be honest, because you know it's not going to come out. So you just push them through there like so thread them up and then you can split them apart and stick them equally down as you go. Measure twice, cut once. Well, I don't think it's going to need much more than, than that there. I reckon as a guesstimate and same again in the hot water apply some heat to that tube soften it up and this goes for anything guys this goes for any tubes that you put on on your filters um, whether it be 16 mil 20 mil they just go on so easily like so and then you've got a Really nice tight fit there. And we can space those out to where we want them. And now that now is going to be hung over the back and coming inside the aquarium. Once we've got the lid back on, I can thread that back over and in. And that'll work great. Right, got all these other little bits and bobs, which we've got to put in. Now then, what do I have got from one of my old marine systems? It's one of these. This is a little wave maker. And they are absolutely amazing for circulation. They've got different, they've got different channels on them made by J-Cod, used to be J-Bo, so they changed the name for some reason, copyright or whatever, I don't know. So you've got your speed control on there, you've got your speed setting, which goes up in increments there, you've got a night mode, which has got a little sensor in there, a little light sensor, so when you click night mode, as soon as the lights go off in here, it'll reduce this pump down to a very, very slow output so it's very minutely just oxygenating that uh, sorry circulating the water and then when the lights come back on again the sensor picks that up and then it circulates again out to whatever you've set it for on here and you've got pulse on there you can have it so it's going like pulsing it'll start stop start stop and that'll create a wave action in your tank for marine systems you can have it in here as well I want to keep the flow rate low in here but I, I want to make sure that CO2 it's being dispersed nice and equally all the way around the tank on this minimum flow on this. And I'm going to stick that up in the corner and you won't see it on top of that sponge filter. So that's going to be hidden out of the way. 
really interesting little bits of kit <clears throat> and they're nice when you um just for an effect if you've got a nice planted tank and you want to put one of these in you don't have to have it running all the time you can have it on a timer just a normal timer whether it be digital or one of the clicky ones um, and it will come on during the day when maybe at an evening time and it will just put a slow little pulse through the tank and you'll have all your plants waving like they would be doing in nature in a river or getting pushed one way and then you can have it stop have it come back on again you can time it whatever you like they're fantastic they're not that expensive you can pick these up relatively cheaply now used ones because i tell you what a lot of people do with these is buy them and not realize how powerful they actually are um, especially in the marine world people are buying one of these they'll think oh, i need this and it's a really nice wave maker and they put it in and it literally blows all the sand and everything around in the tank on its lowest setting so you've got to be careful and do your research on it before um, before you buy one otherwise you end up with a vortex tornado in your tank and all your plants will be pulled out fish will be swirling around and it's um and it's not good at all so, uh, so do your research if you're going to buy one of these guys because they're extremely powerful little little pumps for what they are so that's going to go in so i've used that now we've got the hot water out of the way it actually goes over there we've got our big chunk of baby's tears that you saw in the last video I've been um, thinking about putting that in here somewhere, but I'm not too sure where. I might put a little, a couple of little bits off, but we'll see. We shall see. Anyway, the plan now is to get this in the tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you guys for a minute. I'm going to fit this all in, and then when we come back, I'll take you through what I've done, and we'll pressurise it up, and we'll get it running. Okay. Right guys, I've done. I've put all the CO2 things together now. Um, I've got lights and things everywhere at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all back together, and then we're going to. I'll give you a little run through and show you exactly what I've done. But first of all, I thought I'd show you these little drop checkers. Now you can get two or three different types. If I can find what I've done with the other one. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Both work similar similar ways. With this one, you put 15 drops in there, so it fills that bowl up there, okay? And then you very, very slowly invert it, and the liquid slides around, and the, the water ends up, the liquid ends up around there like that. CO2 enters through there, goes into this chamber, and changes to the color, either yellow, green, or stays blue. With this one, very similar, put your 15 drops in there, let it go down into the ball, slowly turn it over, so then the liquid suspended up in there. Same thing again, the CO2 then will go up through there and change the um, change that liquid in there to the desired colour that you need, okay? And you just suck it to the side of the glass. Now, I've got the CO2 coming in this side of the tank, I'm going to put the drop checker at the other end of the tank. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up both of these drop checkers. I'm going to put one at the left and one at the right, with it being a big tank. We've got that little wave maker in there now. So we're going to have that on a very, very slow, slow movement. Keep that water column moving, because that's very important. So we get the oxygen and everything being moved around, nutrients being moved around and everything else. So give this a good old shake up. And you can just say it's the, it's the indicator region written on there, you see? It says on there, look, you've got high, yellow, green OK, and blue is low. So you know exactly where you are. And green will correspond, correspond to about 30 parts per million. 15 millilitres in here, 15 drops. <clears throat> Pardon me. Right, 15 drops in there. Then you roll that. Into there. 
turn it upside down. If you do get any left, sometimes you get a little bubble in there like you can just push something in there and that'll pop it or blow into it lightly. And there you go, there's your li liquid in there now, your reagents in there. So now we just stick that into the tank down the other end and then we can watch that change colour later on. Okay guys, we're all back. I've put the, um, everything's rigged up in there now and, and all working, all pressurised up as you can see by the gauges there. And if we follow this pipe up now from the solenoid, the solenoid switched on now because it's obviously daytime, so we want the CO2 to flow through into the tank. And then later on, that little switch there on the timer will turn off and close the CO2 off. Now there we've got the bubble counter. I've got it quite high, I've got it about two or three um, bubbles a second there, because what I want to do, because there's no... Um, there's nothing alive in the tank as yet. We can, we can now we can put up the um, the CO2 a little bit higher, which will enable all these roots and plants and things to grow and get a good foothold into the substrate before we put anything in. So um, this is a good time to, um, if you're going to overdose it and have CO2, it's good to do it before you put anything in there. Obviously, otherwise you're going to kill it. So this is the only time that you can put a bit more CO2 in when you've got no inhabitants in the tank and you can root these plants in and get them moving and get them growing quickly. So that's what I do. So what we'll do now, I'll go up, we'll go up the top and we will have a look up there. Right. You can see the CO2 there coming out and all getting wafted around. And if you look, I'll just move my little glass cleaner out of the way. Right, there you go. Now if you look up in the corner there, you can see that little power head blowing about all that, all those CO2 bubbles that are coming out. I'm just going to move my light out of the way a minute and you might be able to see a bit better. Right, there you go, that's a bit better view for you. You can see now the pipe going down, the CO2 there streaming away. <clears throat> and that little power head now is sucking those bubbles in, blowing them all around the tank. Which is what we want for our little plants to start shooting away, getting a foothold in amongst that substrate, throwing some nice strong roots out. And coming along well. Like I say, this is the best time to do it, guys, if you're going to put a CO2 system on. Otherwise, you just put it on gradually. Any CO2 is going to speed up your um, the growth of your plants. But like I said before, make sure that you um, that you don't put too much CO2 in when you've got fish or shrimp in there because you will you will kill them okay oh well there you go it's all back it's all running again now nicely and um, we've done a water change in there put a few more little bits of the baby's tears that big pad I did use in there I put it all down around that bottom of that tree there a patch down there and another patch up in the corner and another little bit down behind in the central tree there as well I'll probably have to keep my eye on it now for a couple of days because because with its extra flow in there as well from that power head it might um, you get a slow build up with all these oxygen bubbles and things and the CO2 flying around underneath the moss if you find that it the bubbles go underneath your moss and end up floating the canopy off before it gets time to stick to the um, to stick to the wood I can see that one's moved already but it's not to worry so I'll just I'll angle things and move things around to suit it later on. And I think what we'll do is we're going to feed. You thought I was going to sell this yesterday, didn't you? When you when you saw that last <laughs> when you saw that last video about me doing my own range of foods, I was only joking, guys. I'd never sell you guys anything. Not food and things that you can make all for yourself free of charge, because that's all part of the channel. This is all, my channel is all about is making sure I can help you guys out as much as I can, give you any knowledge I can. And things like the shrimp foods that you can make yourself, save yourself, you know, a few quid and you can buy yourself some shrimp or fish with um, with the money that you're saving on these foods, these 
companies and people are selling you all over the place so that's the uh, that's the reason I did that just to show you that you can do it all yourself and I made up a couple of little pots and tried tricking you guys but I wouldn't sell you any foods I think what we'll do is we'll stick a piece of this in here I'll drop that in and see what these little chaps make of it look at that they're onto it already and that's all food that we've made you know that I've made myself you've seen if you haven't seen the videos guys pop back and have a look and um, I'll show you it shows you how, how, how you can make all these things and store them leaf preparation all that kind of stuff to save yourself some money now one one of my subs got in touch with me and he said that his shrimp weren't feeding and I, I told him basically if he's got a lot of algae in his tank and things and a lot of biofilm that the shrimps aren't going to be interested in food because they're going to be full up anyway because there's going to be a lot of food natural food being formed in this in the in the aquarium itself so um but as i told him and like if anyone else has got that problem don't feed them for a few days and let them eat that biofilm and that algae in the tank first and once that's exhausted then they'll you'll find they'll be on that food in no time at all just like these guys have jumped on that bit of wafer there that, we, that, that i made um a few videos back now Yeah, they're tucking right into that. I do like these little tigers. Let's see how close I can get. All busy arguing, it's mine, it's mine. And there's quite a few in this system and they're all going crazy now. They're all racing around trying to sniff it out and where it's coming from. There's a nice one there, full of eggs. A, mom, a little mum to be. Busy, busy. And they sure do like that food, so you can go and make yourself some of that and save yourself some money, all right, guys? They saw our making short work of that lot. great stuff oh well guys I'll give you another a quick look at the uh, at the scape there before we go we got the drop checkers up in the back now I'll put them there just for the minute just to see the um, just to see how they react to the co2 but we can get some different readings from different areas we've got that little power head at the top now blowing that co2 around so we can get those plants nicely rooted in And I put some of that dwarf sword, the, the dwarf swords, at the back there as well. Just a couple, just in the background, so they'll grow up and look a few, like a few more bushes. So uh, as time progresses. Anyway, guys, hope you like that little video. Please like, share, and subscribe as always. If you like these little videos, and if you're new to the channel and you have subscribed, welcome aboard. And I hope you've. Uh, I hope you're getting some knowledge from these little videos that we're doing in a workshop here. Anyway, guys, love you all. You're all stars. See you on the next edition of Marks Aquatics. Take care. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.